Intel Arc Alchemist on Linux. It's been an interesting ride. But with the new B580 taking center stage, I can't help but ask, is this the last hurrah for the A770? In this video, I'm taking a look at some big name games. Borderlands 3, Control, The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077, and Horizon Zero Dawn, to see how they're running on the A770. Things get interesting. There might even be some... ray tracing? For this video, I'm using Linux Mint 22, but not the stock setup. I've added kernel 6.12.3 using the mainline tool, and a git build of Mesa 25 from December 7th, 2024, pulled from the OIBAF PPA. If you're thinking about trying these Mesa builds from OIBAF yourself, here's a heads up. This is a bleeding edge build, so new it's still under active development. That means there's a real risk of instability, or even breaking your Ubuntu or Ubuntu-based Linux install. I wouldn't recommend running it on a production machine or anywhere you do important work. Let's see how these games perform, and figure out where the A770 stands today, or tomorrow, or next month really, since this version of Mesa won't officially drop until early next year. Let's get into it. Let's start with Borderlands 3. I've covered this game a couple of times before, mostly using its built-in benchmark. It's always been a tough test for the A770, but this time it holds up much better. But enough of the benchmark, I remember someone commenting on my previous Borderlands video asking for actual gameplay. So here it is. Gameplay is smooth overall, with moments where everything just pops. The reflections and the textures in the foreground standing out from the textures and assets in the background. It looks like Intel's driver devs have done some optimizing since my last test, but there's still room for improvement. Competing cards in the same tier can push out more frames, and if you look at the VRAM utilization in the DXVK HUD, it's surprisingly low for a AAA game running at 1440p. This suggests the game isn't fully tapping into the card's potential. Now let's take a look at FPS metrics from a portion of the playthrough. During this section, the 1% low hit 65.7 FPS, the average was 85.3 frames per second, and the 97th percentile topped out at 104 frames per second. That 1% low is about 77% of the average, comfortably above 60 frames per second, which contributes to the overall smoothness. However, on Windows, AMD or NVIDIA cards in the same tier deliver roughly 30 frames per second more on average, adding that extra layer of depth where objects in the foreground really pop against the background. Here's a visual breakdown of frame rate over time, using an animated graph I created while dabbling with Python. You'll notice some spikes with the FPS shooting up to 200 or even 300 in certain spots, mostly when zooming into areas on screen. It's an interesting quirk, though I'm not sure it's a good thing for the card. Overall, Borderlands 3 is in a much better state on the A770 and Linux combination. A bit more optimization could take it to the next level, but for now, it's still definitely playable and enjoyable. Up next is Control. I've tried this game multiple times over the past year, and it's been a noisy mess. Then I realized I had to Yep, you probably guessed it. Disable MSAA. Disabling multi-sample anti-aliasing drastically improved both visual fidelity and frame rate. That said, there are still issues. Shaders don't load properly, and there are noticeable texture streaming problems that I don't think happen as frequently on other GPUs. In a three minute excerpt where I record frame rate data, the 1% low came in at 52.5 frames per second, the average was 73.4 frames per second, and the 97th percentile hit 88.9 frames per second. The overall frame rate is noticeably lower than Borderlands 3, and the 1% low only covers around 71% of the average FPS, which leads to less consistent smoothness. While the game does look much better without MSAA, I associate this game from 2019 to be pretty well optimized. One that allows graphics cards and high refresh rate monitors to stretch their legs with all the frames it can crank out. That's just not the case on Arc and Linux. Visual quality also suffers compared to similar tier cards from Nvidia and AMD, 
Like Borderlands 3, the A770's 16GB of VRAM seems underutilized. And no ray tracing yet, since I can only play the game in DX11 mode. Looking at Control's FPS chart, there are some odd instances of abnormal, extremely high frame rates, just like Borderlands 3. These spikes seem to happen when a wall is in the frame. Maybe this is normal and I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, but you'd usually expect sustained frame rate increases in situations like these, not short spikes. Anyway, the game is playable, but it's not quite the ideal control experience, yet. Hopefully, that changes over time. Alright, Horizon Zero Dawn on the A770. With this one, I tested using simple sampling and FSR. I didn't try native because generally with these newer AAA games, the native frame rate is stuck in the 30s and 40s. It's normally a matter of what upscaler does a better job... upscaling. I'm using high settings mostly with MSAA disabled and TAA enabled. So let me start off with simple sampling. I got an average FPS of 61.9, 1% lows of 29.3 FPS, and a 97th percentile of 74.6 frames. Compare this to FSR, where the 1% minimum was significantly higher at 48.8 frames per second, almost about 75% of the average at 64.3 frames, and a 97th percentile of 74.3 frames. With simple sampling, there was a pronounced period of low average frame rate in sunny areas and high average frame rate when there was low light. I kinda couldn't get to the sunlit area in the FSR playthrough because I was cornered by the machine creatures, but performance was pretty good. There was a noticeable instance with a big dip in frames, and there were some short peaks in frame rate which happened mostly when I looked away from the partial, luminous view in the distance. Things are still a bit more stable in FSR, but if I remember correctly, I could get 80 frames per second all day on my 6700 XT, which, admittedly, I haven't used for a while. Something else to observe is the really high CPU utilization in this game. It's high during simple upscaling, but it's even higher with FSR on. I guess the upscaling explains some of this, but I'm also wondering if the shortcomings of Alchemist's architecture are showing themselves here, where we're seeing the architecture's weaknesses with compute. As Intel's Tom Peterson discussed in a recent episode of PC World's The Full Nerd Podcast, an episode that focused mostly on Arc Battle Mage. I guess we'll have to see with the release of Battle Mage. Next up, The Witcher 3. You might notice that in this recording, there is no DXVK HUD overlay. Look closely at the Mango HUD overlay. This game isn't running through DXVK. Instead, it's using the DX12 to Vulkan translation layer, VKD3D, and it's running really well. Oh, and in this instance, it's running with XCSS and ray tracing enabled. Unfortunately, the frame rate is pretty low ranging from about 15 to 30 frames per second. Still, the visuals look surprisingly good. I hope there's room for improvement with ray tracing in XCSS, and I'm curious to see if The Witcher 3 runs any better when the new XC driver hits the ARC B580. Since ray tracing was too demanding, I disabled it and tested both XCSS and FSR by themselves. Both upscalers did a great job sharpening the visuals, but there was a clear winner. Let's take a look at the graph and see which one came out on top. That's right, AMD's FSR won pretty decisively. Here's a breakdown of the frame rates. 
Using FSR, the average FPS was 69.3, with a 1% low of 57.3 and a 97th percentile of 78.4 frames per second. With XESS, the average FPS came in at 61 frames per second. The low was 51.8 and the 97th percentile hit 68.4 frames per second. So while Intel's XCSS delivered a lower overall frame rate compared to FSR, the strong 1% lows kept the visuals smooth and stable, which is great for maintaining visual quality during gameplay. The Witcher 3 is showing us just how good gaming on Linux with Intel Arc can be. I don't know if it's solely the Intel driver devs who are responsible for this, but just wow, it's hard not to be impressed. Last, but definitely not least, Cyberpunk 2077. When this game launched in 2020, it earned its title as one of the hardest games to run on a gaming PC. Since then, other games have stepped up to that challenge, but Cyberpunk is still a heavy hitter. Surprisingly, like its CD Projekt Red sibling, The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk is one of the few games I've seen that can run on the Arc and Linux combo using VKD3D. You're watching the ray tracing playthrough right now. The frame fidelity looks impressive, but the A770 just isn't producing enough of those frames. We're in PowerPoint territory here, with native traced rendering sitting around 11 to 13 frames per second. Enabling XCSS gives it a boost to around 17 to 20 FPS. Switching to FSR with ray tracing on, there's no clear winner here versus XCSS. It's a draw. The frame rate stays about the same as with XCSS enabled. Let's turn off ray tracing. With FSR still enabled, we're hitting a fairly consistent 40 to 45 frames per second. There are occasional dips to 28 frames per second, like here when crossing the street, but overall the game holds up well visually. Switching to XCSS with ray tracing off, the frame rate drops slightly to around 35 to 40 frames per second. I'm really hoping we see some XMX core optimizations kick in soon to give XCSS a bit of an edge. What's impressive is that this game, which used to push out noisy, low quality, janky frames even with ray tracing off, is now much smoother. It seems like someone from Intel is starting from scratch with support for this game. I've been worried that Intel's driver developers might be losing interest in Alchemist support, but after testing Cyberpunk and The Witcher, that doesn't seem to be the case. These two games are acting as a sort of showcase of what's possible, and hopefully that bodes well for what's to come with Battle Mage. So there you have it. Intel Arc Alchemist on Linux running a number of games out there that you shouldn't sneeze at. From Borderlands 3 to The Witcher 3, the A770 has had its moments of promise, but also some continuing challenges. With the B580 now taking the spotlight, the question remains, is there still room for the A770 to grow, or is this its swan song on Linux? Well, it certainly seems that the Intel driver devs are continuing to make progress. Games may not perform the way they do on other cards that have more mature drivers, but I'm oddly optimistic. That said, I'd be cautious about recommending the A770 now, especially with the B580 offering hardware-level features baked into its design, rather than relying on driver workarounds that haven't yet been adapted or ported to Linux. Even without one in hand, Battlemage's architecture is undeniably a significant step forward over Alchemist. I'm eager to see how things evolve, especially with future updates to Mesa, and Intel's drivers. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss what's next. Whether it's Alchemist content, Battle Mage content, general Linux gaming stuff, or AI, or whatever else comes down the pipeline. Thanks for watching, good people. Until next time, take care.